Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne, and I am the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jim Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. So we are back from Vegas. We're back. And uh, you know what happened? You know, I got back. There's a lot going on, a lot yeah. to do. I wanted to show you something. Somebody gave me a gift. And one of our church All members right. brought me it. She was in Wisconsin. Okay. She saw this, and she thought of me. All right, let's see it. This is how awesome our people are. Yeah, yeah let's see it. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Is that Sasquatch? It's a Bigfoot. It? It's a it's a Bigfoot toy that shoots balls out of its mouth. No, don't you dare! What? You're gonna shoot it? No, wait, relax. It's not an harmful toy. Well, then what are you doing? What? See? Oh, I missed. And it hit you. Let me try it again. It bounced Hang off on. your computer. <laughs> you can you have it back. It's got a bunch of them. Isn't that cool? She. It was with Terry. Oh, that's Terry, very. Isn't nice. that awesome? Yeah. Terry, this is my new favorite thing. It's gonna stand in my office. Oh, uh, you know what? Cool. I I don't display my uh my my diplomas and degrees. I will display my You'll Sasquatch. Display, display that. Yeah, it's pretty you awesome. Don't have your diploma. You used to. You used to have. Oh, it was on. They were just thing. sitting on a shelf. Yeah, they were sitting on the shelf right there. Yeah. All right. Yeah, now that now good. that Moeller's been silent, you you know you're like, nah, I'm not putting this up no more. Yeah. No, it's it's uh it's more because you know I don't want you to feel uncomfortable coming in seeing I that don't. I have. I all do. of these degrees and all plaques what? and all achievements and well, I don't put them all up, but I've got many, many achievements and plaques. I don't plaques. think so. No, I don't. Have, I don't put them up, but I have them. Yeah. Well, name one achievement. Classmate of the quarter, fourth grade. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going back. I'm reaching way back, but I got a lot of stuff, man. I got commissioned by the North American Mission Board. <laughs> Participation ribbon, sixth grade. No, because you actually have to participate to get those. And ah. you know me. Ah, okay. Joey, don't play. Okay. You know what's funny? I gotta say. I gotta say. Uh, you walked in carrying your food. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> he walked in. He Jimmy walked into the office carrying food. He got here early because he needed to eat. You know, he's on the run. And l- literally, his pants are Thanks, around his knees. They're falling off Thanks, of his bro. body. And he's like, Thanks, my pants bro. are falling down. He's shuffling his pants around his knees. I'm laughing. And, I'm, and I asked him, I'm like, what? Are you, do you unbuckle them or something? He's like, no, man, I'm losing weight and they don't stay up anymore, which yeah, is yeah, a yeah, great yeah. thing. Yeah, so yeah, congratulations yeah, thanks, thanks. and thanks for the laugh. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're welcome. You're mm-hmm. welcome. Appreciate that. Uh, speaking of pants off. Yeah. So Vegas. We're right, in Vegas. Yes. Remember now. Uh, Wait, you know, so what stays, what happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas is what you're about to show. Well, yeah, there was nothing. We didn't do it. <laughs> well, no, but the saying. Yeah. This okay, is saying. okay, but there was nothing. No. Going. Okay, yeah. It, it only counts for things that are like. Oh, bad things. Yes. Okay. We, we didn't do any of those. No, we did not. So. You know how it's like, ah, you know, I'm a big guy. Mm-hmm. So walking around, we're walking around Vegas. It's yep. hot. Yep. We're in jeans. Yep. My calves start swelling. Yep. You know, and Our calves hurting. were screaming. Yeah. They were screaming. They still been screaming. Still been screaming. Okay. And you touch it and you could feel heat like radiating from them. What happened? And you touch it. Like you could touch my calf. Yeah. And it's just painful. Okay. Painful. So I've been ignoring it for the last couple of days. As, as a man does. As a man does. Uh, I can't ignore it no more. What? So I went to the doctor this morning. No. And then. I don't know any of this. I know you don't. This That's is awesome. I went doctor this morning. Okay. And I'm going to try to make this quick because I know this is banter, but this is a good story. They sent me for ultrasound of the calves. Oh, okay. Right? Now, usually, oh, well, I'm just using ultrasound as pregnancy, but go ahead. I don't. Go. Yeah. Hey, the men calves. can get pregnant too. Yeah. yeah That's so what I've learned. They sent me over. I'm not going to say where. Okay. Okay. Why not? Okay. Just they sent me over. And. Uh, Delmar, I go ahead. Finally go get in. And uh, nice lady takes me in the back. And so uh, she goes, all right, well, we need you to take your pants off. Right. And I go, well, these are my calves and I wore these jeans. I could pull them up. Yeah. You can just check right there. She's like, Mm -hmm. I got to go for the growing down. Wow. Yeah, because it could be blockage, like blood. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now it's just awkward. Right. Now it's just awkward. So pants are off. Yep. Up on the table. Trying to, you know. It's all professional, legit. All professional, everything good. And so, you know, she's using the thing and. Push her around and mm-hmm. she's got to start at the top yep. and work her way down and she's right. going through. Did she laugh? No. Okay, good. But I kept my eyes closed. Yes. It's like no eye contact. Yeah, no. no, no it's no, like no. the urinal. It's, just... it's like the urinal. Yeah. Eyes forward, yep. no contact. Right. Right. Close your eyes if you need to. <laughs> just don't look. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I close my eyes. Right. Right. And uh, she goes, Hey, I think I know you. <gasps> no and I go, way. I go, uh, I Really? Go, I go, Really? She's like, Yeah. Uh, hmm. Are you one of the pastors at Redeemer Fellowship? Oh, no. I go, uh, yes. <laughs> and she goes, oh, yeah, you preach sometimes, right? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. She goes, yeah. My husband and I go to a church in Carroll Stream, and we visited you guys a couple times, and we listened to your sermons online, you know, because at that time, no one, you know, our church wasn't meeting. So 
Yeah, I really enjoy your journey. Uh, yeah. And she's still checking around. Yeah, she's doing, she's doing her do business while she's talking to you about all this. It awesome. was the most awkward no, it's beautiful. moment. This is so and beautiful. And so she, she says that, you know, and she's talking. She's like, well, it was very nice meeting you. Throws me a towel. She's yep. like, make sure you clean yourself up and I'll be right on yeah. the outside. It was just. Is the weirdest. And how many months do you have left? <laughs> what is the diagnosis? You know what? I'll actually find out here soon. Oh, that the call we're waiting That's on? That's the call oh, I'm okay. waiting on. Okay, all right. On the results, whether or not it's blood clots or fat man fatigue. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we're hoping for fat man fatigue because you, you can fat. change that, you know, just yeah, by... Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, even yeah, a blood clot, like, you just go get a pill and you're fine. Yeah, unless it breaks free and goes into your brain and you That's die. Like, well, that was the other part, right? It's like the last few days I'm like massaging it out, going through the pain Trying of it. Loose, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bomb. I'm just like, I'm just like, yeah, it's fine. Uh, uh. And when she was like, you're, you're, it's gonna go to your lungs. It's gonna go. Yeah. Like, no, I'm good. Pulmonary embolism is that what they call that? I have no idea. Mm, okay. But uh, yeah, so either I have a blood clot, or yeah, it, it just it was just, or I just went and embarrassed myself in an uncomfortable situation and she had yeah she was of the utmost professionalism well that is great and by the way a pulmonary a pulmonary embolism is a blood clot that gets lodged in an artery in the lung so i was right oh. i'm smart you are and very i don't smart. have a blood clot well so yeah that was my right. embarrassing well, moment okay well that was good you know i appreciate that and you know what i got i bet some people got a chuckle out of it which is good because we're going to talk about laughter today we're talk about some laughter we're gonna talk about laughter because here's here's the here's the thing i grew up watching what did i grow up watching what what did i grow up watching Cops. no murder mystery horror movie horror movie you I don't know, know. I figured that, there was like a there's specific one show. thing there's one thing i spent all right but the other thing i watched a lot of was comedy and yeah. like because there were no filters or restrictions in my house i could watch george carlin and uh eddie no. murphy at a very very young at the youngest of ages right um but there's a uh, irish comedian named david allen or dave allen dave allen at large it was on pbs okay. back then because we didn't have bbc yeah, yeah, here in the States. And uh, Dave Allen was this Irish comedian, you know, good looking guy, always in a suit and was funny. And he talked about what laughter is and how it worked. I've looked for this on YouTube for years. I cannot find it. I okay. looked again today, cannot find it. But uh, I remember, because I loved comedy and I loved horror, right? Yeah, these, yeah. these two sort of extremes. And they actually do play off one another pretty well. Um, and so I'm excited to talk about this because as people know, you and I, we like to laugh. I like that's would love a big, to laugh. That's a big part of what we do here, right? It's probably the only thing I like about you. Yeah, well, there's not much else. That's it. No, there is. I have the one thing. One thing. And so I like I like to laugh with you. Yeah, and at me. And, yep. Uh, no. Yep. Mm, no, I think yeah. we have it in there. That's a bad, bad. Yeah, no, you, yeah but you still do that thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I want yeah. to admit that sin okay. right now. Okay, <laughs> all right. So I'll admit it for you. It's fine. Okay, so we like to laugh. We like to have a good time. And, uh, but there are a lot of Christians that seem to be humorless, right? Oh, like, man. like they're super, like not funny, especially, and listen, no offense guys, especially in the reform tradition, a lot of you guys are super uptight, that, right? You know what? RBF is, is, you know, it's, it's true. Yeah. yeah that it, resting Baptist face is just, it's, it's there. So, uh, why do you think that is? Why do you think some Christians lack a sense of humor? Well, I think they don't know. I, well, maybe I, I'm wondering if there's a pendulum swing, like if they swung so hard mm -hmm. to like, I have to be ultra conservative and be because they don't want to be uh, unwholesome talk. Like right. They, they, they don't want to be crass. They don't want to be rude. They don't want to be uh, maybe maybe another way of uh, they, they don't want to bring others down. Right. right. It, and so I think that, that maybe there's a misunderstanding of what comedy is can be right right yeah sure uh because like you even like today you see you've got all these and you even mentioned this, some of them like some really crass rude, right um, hysterical <laughs> comedians yeah but then you've also got other comedians out there like brian regan brian regan thank you I, I the name escaped me like who is nowhere near that level no. but is absolutely beautiful dead funny and all the comedians respect him exactly yeah. because it's 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 so it, it's so pointed, yeah. right? He dials it in. He's very. Fun. He's not trying to be a clean comic. That's just who he is. He's just, he just he's happens just to be a clean guy. talking guy. He's a guy that's a clean. Like he's you know he's a comic that's clean. Yeah, it's funny because <clears throat> when I was a non Christian, I went through of course this real depressive phase, and then God brought friends in my life. So imagine that I was isolated, mm -hmm. had no friends, very depressed. Um, but God brought friends into my life that really brought me out of the, my depression to a large degree. I would I was suicidal, and one guy would just. Oh. Oh, is this your call? call? This is the doctor. Oh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. All right, so we're back, right? 
I'm here. Okay, no, you were on the phone. I'm on. Listen, don't don't keep us in suspense. The, this, you're either going to ruin this this whole thing. By the way, this is not a setup, guys. That, that Jimmy told me he's going to probably get a call. I didn't know what it was about. This is all legit. You know, we don't do skits and play around. So um, either you're going to ruin our talk on laughter with some bad news, mm -hmm. or or you're going to give us good news and we can keep on rolling. What is it? I, it's just I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> What did they say? They go, Jimmy, I'm afraid to tell you that. Um, <laughs> no. you're, if, I don't know if you know this, but you're overweight. Is that what they did? Yeah, no, she was just like, uh, yeah, good news. We found nothing. And she went through the thing and all that. She checked both. They checked both legs because they're both like, so like, yeah, it's just fatigue. Thanks for Tylenol. Yeah, you're a big and, baby. And she's That's like, massage them. Get you're, your wife to massage them. Ah, I was go. like, there we go. You are a baby. Thanks, dude. So basically, you walked around a little too much no, and your legs hurt. It. I only That's went, what it was. I, I promised. Michelle had begged me for the last two days to go. Yeah. And I refused. Last night, she made me promise. She goes, if, if they still feel the way they've been feeling mm -hmm. in the morning, yeah. you need to go. Okay. You promise me you'll go. I said, I will go. No, you did the right and thing. I went. Yeah. But it just proves that you're a baby. That's what it is. No, it's fine. It's fine. Now you and you know what? And, and, FYI, mm -hmm. this is why I didn't tell you to eat this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I did not know what was going yeah, on. See? All did, right. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, I'm very happy. I was actually praying during that phone call, even though it was probably too late because it's already happened. But I I'm know glad. you. It's a waste. Yeah. You wasted a because prayer. Because it's not going to go you back in time. God's not going to go back peace. in time after the fact I'm praying. Like, oh, you're saying God can't go back in time? I'm saying wow. I don't think it works that way. Wow. Is this a tomorrow war situation? He it can is. only go back 30 years? Yeah, it's, but it's better than the movie. <laughs> My riffing oh. is better than me. Oh, I'm so relieved for you. That is awesome. Everybody's rejoicing with you. Okay, so what I was saying was I um, I was brought out of my depression to a large degree by friends that would just make me laugh against my will. They were so funny. So Sk wait a second. Yeah. I just came to the realization. Yeah. I got touched for nothing. Yep, you got, you got, you were made uncomfortable. Radically uncomfortable. That fondling was free. Yep. Yep. It was no benefit. Definitely not to her. All right. Of course not to her. But she's okay. Yeah, I'm just saying like, ugh. That was so, it was so weird, Joey. It was so weird. Okay, sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Um, I'm now going through the moment of. Yeah, relief, realization. Just, well, and. What shame, I, embarrassment. That's the part. Mm -hmm. The shame and embarrassment. Yeah, go you're going to go. There's, there's, there's four more stages. So just. Uh, <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go. So, but they got me out of it. And then, so like this guy, Scott, and so the guy, Brian, mm -hmm. I would laugh so hard. I, my sides would hurt. My, I would cry, I would laugh so hard with these guys. And then I become a Christian after high school. Yeah. And I didn't meet a funny person until. I went, nope. Uh, until me. Nope. I met, wow. I didn't meet a funny person until I met a guy named Doug oh, cool, um, cool. at Southern Seminary. The one guy that was just so funny, yeah. would just kill me. And then again, it was like, all right, not so much. And then I met Steve. Steve was a funny guy. And then I've met you. But like, that's over the span of like many, many years. And, and out of the three. Out of the three people. Mm -hmm. You're one of them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The best one being. The best one. Rank them. The, it rank them in rank terms of em. like being a baby. You're the, number one, the baby. Best. Being oh, the best. a different B word. The mm. best. You're the best, Jimmy. Yes. You hear that, Steve McCoy? You get me. I get you. You do. We have the same humor. All right. So then, yeah, I've, I found this as well. Like a lot of Christians just aren't funny. Uh, they're afraid to laugh and they don't know. How, maybe they maybe you're right. Maybe they don't know how to transition to jokes that are okay. Um, and maybe they're a little too uptight at times, but. And the Puritans, of course, they get a real bad rap. People are like, oh, mm. it's a Puritanical thing. But we don't have time to go into it. But the Puritans did laugh. They liked jokes. Uh, they liked puns. They liked uh, sarcasm. Uh, they had parties. Puritans actually had parties all the time. What? Not Not parties with debauchery in them, but they had of parties course, with festivals, songs, all, all that stuff. Man. They, nice. they, they had a good time. Uh, and they also played cards. So don't listen to people that say they didn't play cards. All right. Jimmy, what does the Bible say about laughter? Uh, it it does say that there is a time to laugh, right? If you look at Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 4, for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under the sun, under heaven, sorry. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, mm -hmm. a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh. That's right. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Yeah. So, yeah, there are opportunities. Like, we, 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 it, we're people that will find that joy and laugh and enjoy humor in life. And the, the thing, because I've thought about this quite a bit, that this, the issue of laughter, um, because you and I use it in, in so many different ways. We both, you know, yeah. independently yeah, yeah, no, right. arrived at that. And one of the things when you read like uh, articles on laughter, right, you, whether they're psychological or scientific or whatever, uh, one of the things that, that is that runs through all of it is that laughter is this, uh, we would say it's a gift of God, but it, Laughter is one of the things, humor is one of the things that God uses to lift humanity above our pain, above our confusion, above our suffering, 
like in the midst of painful and um, confusing days, uh, laughter is a brief reprieve, mm. right? It's, it's, it, it, you can blow off steam. Yeah. And it, you could say, well, isn't that a kind of escapism? It may be, but it can also, oftentimes humor isn't escapism, it's irony. You know, it's like, like we laugh for different reasons. Now, when we're talking about laughter in scripture, uh, you know, somebody might want to point out, well, doesn't God laugh? Like in the Psalms, we read about God laughing, but God doesn't laugh like we do. It's a, yeah. it's, I mean, like our laughter is a result of some, usually my understanding is laughter is a result of some kind of a surprise uh, that we experience in the unfolding of a misfortune and inconsistency or an observation. If somebody's telling you a story, the laughter comes when the surprise and the irony kind of mm -hmm. come together and you're like, oh, wow, it caught me off guard. God's not caught off guard. He doesn't laugh. No, like that's right. Laugh. Yeah. But what does this, what do the Psalms say about God and laughter? Yeah. I mean, it talks about that. It's a specific kind of laughter, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Psalm 2, 4, he who sits in the heavens laughs, the Lord holds them in derision. Oh, that's not a, that's not the good kind. That that's not a good kind, right? That, <laughs> it's it's you know, and again, you know, we're talking. I guess we're using metaphor. Would you say that? Yeah, we're talking like yeah, because we're ascribing. Uh, it's an anthropomorphism, yeah, or anthropopath, anthropopathic language, but yeah, ascribing human qualities to God. Yeah, so he sits in heavens, laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. So yeah, it's not a, that's not a good laughter, right? Yeah, he's, it's a scornful laugh. Yeah, yeah. Psalm 37, 12 and 13, the wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him, but the Lord laughs at the wicked for he sees that his day is coming. Again, there is sort of the uh, uh, the irony, right? Because the wicked think like, oh, I've got the upper hand. I'm going to make this happen. Yeah. And yeah. God laughs. It's like, bro, you know. <laughs> <laughs> your 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 doom like this state like saying your doom is sure yeah and even psalm 59 8 uh, again yet uh, but you O lord laugh at them you hold all the nations in derision so these people groups these nations that think that they could be above god that they could yeah. be uh that they are somehow more powerful than god yeah here we have this scorn this laughter at them like you don't know your place yet but you will yeah it's it's a it's a righteous like uh oh I don't know. There's a word. There is definitely a good word for. It. I can't think of it. But yeah, it, it's it, we, if we were to laugh at somebody with derision, it would more than likely be a sinful thing, at least a lot of the time. But yeah. uh, but this is obviously God in His righteousness and His holiness doing this. So we we do see uh, some other passages in Scripture speaking about our laughter, like uh, Psalm 126, uh, the first three verses. Uh, this is after returning from exile, right? And the Jewish people are rejoicing. And they're laughing. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Mm. I mean, it's a beautiful picture when you see like, hey, uh, the people of God experience a kind of joy that is expressive and explosive. Yeah. Right? We, and it, it leads to not crazy, like nonsensical, holy laughter, like in some of the extreme charismatic movements, but a laughter that is rooted in who God is and what he's done for us because it's such a surprising grace that we don't deserve. Hmm. But even what I love about it is that it's also something that we can look forward to, right? Mm -hmm. It's something that yes. that is a overflow of our contentment with, with God. Yes. Right? Um, Luke 6, 20 and 21. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Right? So he says, mm -hmm. those who are poor, you're going to have the kingdom. Yep. Those who are hungry now, you're going to be satisfied. Futuristic, looking yep. towards the future. Looking towards this hope. Now, blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. I love that it says laugh. Yeah. It doesn't say you shall be comforted. Yeah. Which is true. Which is true and great and wonderful. And that that even in and of itself is a wonderful promise. Yeah. Right. But it's blessed are you who weep now for you shall laugh. Like there would be that that uh, uh, that joyful outward expression. Yeah. Right. Of of what God has done for us. There's a there's a, there's a lot of truth in the saying that laughter is a gift from God. Yeah. Right. Um, it, it is a part of our humanity. Um, and I think it'll be a part of our humanity after the resurrection of the dead, I think in eternity, because we will still be amazed and we will still wonder at God's grace. There will still be surprises for us. We'll still learn yeah. things. And so I, th I think it's good for us to notice and just admit, recognize that in the Bible, you're going to see jokes. You'll see humorous proverbs, puns, irony, satire, all that stuff. Like God weaves humor into uh, the scripture and into the stories. 
Um, but why don't we talk about why we laugh mm -hmm. and who's mowing the lawn now? Why do they got to mow the lawn now? I love it. Well, we're all also day, all day, they could have <laughs> mowed the lawn and now they're going to mow. The okay. There's okay. Joe being happy and content. All right. So I, I came across this quote a while back. Uh, it's a professor at uh, Florida State, okay. uh, Jackson Lee Ice said, um, and he, and he talks about how humor is an essential part of being human. He says this, man is the only animal that weeps and laughs and knows that he weeps and laughs and wonders why. He is the only creature that weeps over the fact that he weeps and laughs over the fact that he laughs. He is the most humor-seeking, humor-making, and humor-giving species that has walked the earth, ever ready to provoke and to be provoked with laughter. Even in the midst of fear and pain, he is capable of incongruously ameliorating his misery by a smile, a pun, or joke. And any of you who have successfully walked through trauma, tragedy, mm. um, or any other T word that would fit there, uh, you know that there is a, a comfort and an alleviation of pain when you find humor and laughter. Like when, you know, when we experience death in the family, you and I both like, you know, we mourn, yep. right? We weep, but we also find opportunity and ways to, uh, to express and experience levity and all of that. And laughter is good medicine. But laughter, I mean, we, so we see it kind of happening in a couple of ways. So the easy one is to say that laughter accompanies joy. Right. So when you are experiencing mm. joy, laughter is normal, right? Whether you're experiencing God's good gifts in your life, right? Whether that's, uh, hey, you got good news from the doctor. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you are you don't have blood clot. Yay. Yeah. Um, so God's good gifts. Uh, and of course, all those spiritual blessings as well. Laughter can come from that. Uh, when God's character is revealed uh, in the midst of, of a culture or a civilization that is so unsteady and, and chaotic. Um, God's purpose in all things. Like when you have joy in the midst of difficult, dark days, mm -hmm. uh, that joy will oftentimes manifest itself in laughness, which is something that can comfort others, but it can also confuse or befuddle the world because you're like, how are you finding joy in the midst of, of all of this? And what's because it's not, my joy isn't grounded in my circumstances, but it's grounded in my God. Mm. So what about this idea that laughter lifts us above are suffering, right? Like you've been to funerals, you've done, have you officiated funerals yet? No. Okay, I've done a bunch of those. Yeah. Um, but but frequently when people get up and they'll give a good word, how common is it in your experience that somebody tells jokes about the person who died? Not yeah, they. I mean, my the ones I've been to, yes, I've seen uh, where they tell a joke, something humorous that they may have said or done yeah. or, or maybe a little quirk about them and everyone everyone laughs at it because hey, that's who the person was, yeah. right? And, uh, so it's not a, a belittling of the individual. Right, right. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I think there's, it, it brings this, um, this levity mm -hmm. to a, a sombering situation. Um, you know, even though for those of us that, that have this hope, we, we come in rejoicing yet mm -hmm. still somber. Yeah. Uh, and it's still great to have that, that moment of levity. It's like the talk about graveyard humor, you know, like the, the what's, what's, what's graveyard? Gra graveyard humor. Why don't you Google it while I try to explain it? What? No, no, there's going to be like a picture. No, there's no, you silly. How graveyard humor is <laughs> I don't it? know. Like, all right, graveyard humor. All right, before I hit enter, um, I will tell you what I think it is. So uh, the, the way that I would explain it is um, in the midst of, of scary, frightening, or uh, dreadful circumstances, we make jokes, right? Mm -hmm. So graveyard humor, uh, also known as uh, black comedy or dark humor. Um, gallows humor is another word for it. And uh, it basically uh, makes light of a matter or a situation that is generally considered uh, dark, troubling, uh, serious, painful, or taboo. So, like graveyard humor, like we, you know, we'll uh, we'll we'll use that we'll use humor to break free from pain, right? It, mm -hmm. to, to like break out of it, even if it's just temporarily. Um, laughter, in a very real sense, is short-term relief from despair, right, or from yeah. dread. And so we see it, you know, in, in, you know, uh, in, in our, in our suffering, maybe you've lost somebody or maybe you're going through some really dark days, you know, it can break the tension. What do we say, Jimmy? What do we say when we have one of our preachers, uh, who's going to go up and preach like one of the men that we've coached and yeah. trained and mentored and prayed for. And so like Tony's going to go up or Travel's going to go up. What's probably the last thing you say to them before they go up to preach on a Sunday? The last thing moments before mm -hmm. don't mess it up. That's right. 
And that's right. Don't screw this up. Don't screw this <laughs> up. Don't you ruin this opportunity. <laughs> because it breaks attention. We uh, yeah. Obviously, we don't think they can mess it up. We already know what they're preaching. Well, on. first of all, yeah, if there was someone that maybe I was like a little iffy on, I'm like, they're not getting up I'm, there. Well, not only are they not getting up there, but if for some reason in that moment I could tell, it's like, yeah, probably I'm just going to let this person be. Yeah. 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 If, Though if, sometimes it helps because it breaks that tension. That's the idea, right? Yeah. People laugh like, okay, yeah. Because because in, even in saying the joke, uh, they understand in our culture, in our church, like they can't. All they got to do is present the word, you know? So even when we mess up in our delivery, uh, the revelation itself, you know, is true. Um, one of the ways that we uh, can uh, be lifted above our suffering through laughter is by laughing at ourselves. Probably that's one of the, my biggest, laughing at myself and, uh, and breaking the tension. Yeah. And yeah. probably graveyard humor now that you started yeah, talking sure. about it. I was like, yeah. I was like oh, yeah, yeah we that's, that. that's definitely you and I. That's how we cope. It's that's one, one cope. of the ways that we cope. Yeah. So yeah, laughing at ourselves because I mean, listen, there are situations that it's easy to get defensive. It's easy to get mm -hmm. like insecure. It's easy to uh, try to blame others, right? But yep. oftentimes it's just something silly you did or something happened. You fell, you stumbled, or you said something ridiculous. Just roll with it. I've just, I mean, you know, you've learned in the podcast. I just, I just keep going with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we embrace it. And this is the thing, like laughing at yourself requires humility, right? Yeah, I'm pretty um, humble, y'all. Like when you, when you laugh at yourself, you're, you're recognizing your, your limitations or your ignorance. Um, and so like, I remember, I remember when I learned to laugh at myself, I was a teenager because I've always been a super insecure guy. I don't like looking dumb. And so if I got embarrassed, I would be furious. I would get so Like was angry. it your like embarrassed? Like, okay. Were you furious with them or yourself or? Myself. Okay. Yeah. Like I just was mad at the situation. Not mad at somebody. So like I, I would do like if I slipped and fell right in front of everybody, like that would just destroy me. And I, I worked with a guy. Now this guy was a fighter, like a street fighter. Yeah. Well-trained, bad dude. And he would just point his finger and laugh at me. We worked together in the tire shop. He would laugh at me if something happened because it was funny. It's not so much that he's mocking me. The situation was funny and I would, mm -hmm. but I could, what, what am I going to do to him? I can't do anything to him. I can't fight that guy. Yeah, I yeah, can't, yeah. Like he would destroy me. And we started hanging out and he would embarrass himself on purpose because he thought it was funny. We would go to the movies. This in the 80s. We'd go to the movies. He'd get a large popcorn and a Coke. And he'd walk down. We'd walk into the middle of a crowded theater. And he would s slip and fall on purpose and throw that popcorn up in the air all over everybody. <laughs> and like, It's just so... <laughs> it's so... Yeah, it's so dumb. And so... But it was hysterical. And he did it and, because it was funny. He was... Mm -hmm. He could laugh at himself yeah. in, like in any situation. It was actually a really big help for him because it learned. Like, don't take yourself so seriously, man. That's People it. mess up. Why are yes. you so serious yes. about yourself? I mean, yeah. I... If I took serious, every time I messed up or said something kind of foolish, yeah. I wouldn't get up on the pulpit. I wouldn't no, get behind. I would yeah. not. I, I would. Wh why would I even, you know? And that can be really from, like some people are that way because they've been in an oppressive family, right? Where like they're constantly belittled and ridiculed. And so maybe they're, mm. why, and I certainly wasn't. Um, but some people maybe have reasons why they are really uptight and and overly self-conscious and can't laugh at themselves. But most of us can learn to do this because it's just, it's a proper understanding that yeah, you're a sinner and you fail and you fall and that's normal. Yeah. And you know, if you're, if you're sinning, repent, but I mean, really otherwise let's move on. Don't take it too seriously. And that's something that I think we're, we're big on, right? We take God seriously. We don't want to take yes. ourselves too yes. seriously. Uh, we'll take the word seriously, yep. but not our words yep. so seriously. Man. And laughter. All that's fire, bro. Yeah. Well, fire, fire. Um, and of course, laughter heals. Proverbs seventeen twenty two, uh, joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Um, and so, like, this just shows you, like, laugh. You need laughter in your life. God wants you to laugh. Yeah, you're supposed to laugh. Yeah, you're made to laugh. Yeah, and if you're not, you're missing out on some relief, some healing, and a very particular and delightful form of joy. But Joe, sometimes it's really important to learn. Here's here's one of the things about people that like to make people laugh and they yep. like to joke around mm -hmm. and like to have fun. Yep. What they need to learn, though, is how to read a room. Yep. They need to learn how do, how do I read a room and the situation? Yeah. Because it's not always time to laugh. Right. There are times when you should not be laughing. Yeah. And so, now, listen, sometimes that makes it a lot harder to not laugh. Oh, right? gosh. I mean, so. <laughs> it, uh, the moment you tell me I can't laugh at yeah, it, it's like, oh, no, uh, I, yeah. I must. Now it's a challenge. Now I have to. Okay. Um, but, like, let's let's say this. Like, you definitely. And so, like, when you're in church. 
and you're worshiping and you're with your brother or your sister or your friend and something happens. You're not supposed to laugh. You're supposed to be worshiping. Paying yeah, attention. yeah. Okay. If you laugh in that situation, we're not talking about that kind of a situation. No, exactly. We're talking about serious situations. It's like so, when you're walking down the aisle and everyone's kind of looking at you and, but Steve McCoy is at, at the end of the aisle. Yes. And so you just go ahead and give him a little check. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. just give him a little quick little tap, tap, tap. Eh? Yep. And uh, you do it for the joy and benefit of everyone around him. That when sees he that. Hunches over. When he winces. And, when he yeah. winces and goes, oh. Yeah. Well, you better put a belt on when you're walking down the aisles this no, Sunday because your don't, pants I are will, falling down. I, will. I, I, just had, I just ordered a new pair of jeans. Good. Slim fit? No, I, I can't do that. No, no. It I looks silly on guys. I don't like silly. Us. All right. So you don't laugh when it's time to repent. Right? Yeah. You're supposed to be mourning your sin, taking this seriously. James 4, 8 through 10, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. See, mm. there's a time to mourn and there's a time to laugh. And this is the time to mourn. Yes. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. Laughter comes after repentance. That's like right. Freedom comes once you have you know returned to the Lord, but in the midst of repentance, you need to take that very seriously. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, also not a good time to laugh uh, or appropriate to laugh when someone else is in need. Like, yeah, if real need. If you see yeah. someone in actual need that is hurting, uh, I was, that's just cruelty. It's just yeah. it's just utterly cruel to be laughing in the face of the individual in the midst of their pain. You know, the best part is no one hears that. See my oh no, that I guarantee they're gonna pick up on the on the sound difference. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, yeah all that gets out. Yeah, th- that's an additional noise. Yeah, but it's not it's not what you think it is. Because I've I've done these before. I went and listen. Oh, it ain't the so same. Annoying. I can't believe right outside my window. <laughs> Why are you so bad at people? So you don't laugh when someone's in need. Yep. It's cruel. Yeah, it's just You don't mock them in their need. Yes. Okay. Uh, You know, obviously in the midst of being uh, foolish or arrogant. Yeah. uh, For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of fools. Mm. This is also vanity. Because like they will laugh it up. They will make light of serious situations when you're supposed to be serious. Like there's a time to be sober minded. There's a time to be deadly serious about something and not be goofing around. And of course, the fools just run right ahead. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then some is just inappropriate. Some laughter is just inappropriate. Sure. Right? Like if it's uh, uh, characterized by cruelty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that then that's not funny anymore. That's not funny. Uh, you anymore. know, if it's if it's springing from hate, you yeah, know, yeah. like, you know, like, uh, uh, hey, a racist joke. Yeah. Is racist. Now, that doesn't mean that a joke that is said by someone that involves another race is necessarily racist, but, oh. but that's a whole nother topic. Just give me, give me, just give me one example. Well, I can't think of a joke because I don't tell jokes, but if I were to make a joke- No, of, I, you know what? I'm just going to ask you not to do it. If I were to make a joke <laughs> about going to a, a black cookout or barbecue and say something about how like, you know, I would, I would probably bring the wrong dish and this is why, uh, like that's not- that involves race and some stereotypes, but it's not mean spirited. It's not cruel. And anybody who's yeah, yeah. and and my, my black friends that have the cookouts be like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Just saying, it's a separate subject. What wrong dish did you bring? I never get invited to the black cookouts, the barbecues. It doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, because I, I would probably bring like macaroni and cheese uh, from a box with raisins in it. With wet raisins. I'm just thinking like, how wrong could I go? I would how probably go that go? wrong. I would okay. probably just you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, okay. And people are like, yeah, don't do that. Well, there's also some other laughter that's inappropriate when it trivializes God, mm-hmm. right? Like when, uh, I mean, would you even look at that as as taking his name in vain? Yeah, yeah, that definitely. It's it's a breach of the third commandment to trivialize yeah. God. To um, you know, to take his name in vain is to treat him and the things of God in an inappropriate way, as if they aren't serious and important. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, there's a and again, <clears throat> not every humorous thing that you would say that involves God or truth is trivializing, but we want to be careful here. And then of course, there's just in general the wrong timing, like wrong timing. And you talked about this earlier. Read the room. There's a context. Like I could tell a joke on air here that I wouldn't tell in the pulpit, and it's not because the joke itself is inappropriate. It's just a different just context. Different, yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't laugh. Uh, and knowing people, right? Some person in the midst in the midst of laughing at a situation might be provoked to anger and another person might not. So you do just need to know, is this the right time? Is this the right place? Is this the right person? Is this the right context hmm. uh, for the expression of joy that we're experiencing? So 
we go around a lot. Oh, a lot. We like to laugh. I love when we laugh. And we want to take God seriously. Yep. Um, and the things of God seriously. Yeah, we don't we don't play. We yeah. don't we don't we don't want to play with that stuff. It doesn't mean that we don't fail, of course. But yeah. um, and so we know it's important to be sober minded. But we also believe it's really important to laugh. Now, of course, you might say, "Well, of course you're going to say that because you guys are always laughing." Yeah, but it's because we've learned that laughter is important, and we've mm. had to change maybe some of the ways that we laugh. Right? And yeah. Way, like, oh, it's yeah, not, yeah. It's yeah. not the way it was back in the day. No, 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 no. You want to read that Spurgeon quote? We got a we got a good we can end on a Spurgeon quote. Yeah, I would love to read this. I am very sorry whenever I meet with Christians who have no joy. I am most of all vexed with myself whenever my own joy burns dimly. For we who have the light of the glory of God ought to have shining faces. Mm. We have been forgiven. We are God's children. We are on the way to heaven. Then surely, if anybody's mouth ought to be full of laughter, and if any tongue should be turned into sweet, into sweetest music, it should certainly be ours. There are none who have such a right to lead perfectly happy lives as Christians. That's a good word, man. Spurgeon knows how to say it. Mm -hmm. God wants you to laugh. Righteous laughter is the product of gratitude and wonder and wisdom and curiosity mm -hmm. and surprise and self-awareness and joyful faith. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You could follow us online on Instagram or Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DoctrineDevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast with the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some gear. We got that fresh pod every Monday and Thursday. We got blog posts and video content over at the website. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. You went and got the ball for your... The, yeah, the big boy's going to shoot you again. Finish up. We're, we're trying to get it going. We've got that uh, Tuesday... Oh, bitch! In the eye, <laughs> <laughs> it bounced off my screen. We got that all-access exclusive content. Your bachelor of truth on Tuesdays, your weekday wisdom Monday through Friday. Head on over to drfortune.com/slash/all-access to sign up today. Later. Later.